So last time we were uh, discussing some basic definition in Euclid's uh, geometry. Yeah. And last time you had already started teaching us the axioms and postulates. Yeah, we had some definitions. Uh, actually, uh, two three questions were only left in the last class. I think I have completed all the uh, postulate. We were discussing some terms here, like ray we have discussed, opposite ray also we have discussed, I think. Yeah, opposite ray also we have discussed. Now, what was remaining here? Collinear points. Collinear points now are more than three longer points, okay? Because to, uh, between two points, there will be always a straight line, okay? So it should be minimum of three uh, points and many more points can be taken, okay? If they all fall, all the points, if all the points, if all the points lie on the same line, okay? They lie on the same, or joining all the points, you get a straight line, then they are collinear points. And if the point, two points are here, two, between two points, you will get a straight line only, and this is non collinear point. Okay, now what else? Intersecting lines. Obviously, when two lines intersect at uh, intersect at a point, they are called intersecting point, and the point where they intersect and meet each other, that is a point of intersection. Okay, concurrent lines, three or more lines intersecting at the same point are called to be concurrent. Okay, when two, uh, when three or more lines they uh, intersect at single point. For example, if there are many lines, they are intersecting at the same point. This, these lines are called concurrent lines. Concurrent lines. Okay, and the last one is. A pyramid okay pyramid base can be of any polygon shape okay it can be a square it can be a hexagon it can be a triangle but all the figures will be uh, all the figures that is above it they are all a uh, triangle okay for example from a single base uh, i'm taking if i'm taking a square okay and now from these square if i'm drawing a okay from all the bases from all the, uh, you can say all the sides, you are going to uh, lift a triangle, okay? And they, all the triangles are going to meet at a single point, okay? So that is a pyramid. Understood? It can, the base can be of any shape, okay? The base can be of any uh, polygon, okay? But all the, from every side, you are going to draw a triangle, okay? Yeah, all this, just maybe lines and you know, lift, the dotted lines and you know, from the base, if you lift it, so you see, it is a, that is a pyramid and all the triangles will be meeting at a single point okay so that is a pyramid understood any doubt no no i understand okay very good now uh some of the questions in the given figure if a b and c are the three points on a line and b lies between a and c then prove that a b plus b c is equal to a c now you have to prove that how can you prove that a b plus b c is equal to a c now see it is written that, uh, or it is given that A, B, and C uh, are three points on a line. Okay, so all the three points are lying on a line, and B lies between A and C. So B is in between A and C. Okay, that means A, B plus B, C. If you add A, B and A, B plus B, C, so actually it is coinciding with A, C. Yes or no? If all the three points are lying on a line, and B is lying between A and C, okay, B is lying between A and C. Now, sorry. Okay, now all the three are lying on that. Okay, now you have to prove to prove AB plus BC is equal to AC. Okay, now how can we prove that? See, AB, if you'll add AB plus BC, so it, if you see AB plus BC, so actually AC is coinciding with AB plus BC or not? What is the coinc uh, coinciding thing? See, uh, I'm the coinciding axiom, and that we have to tell. Yeah, yes. I'm the coinciding to... axiom is that when two things coincide, they're equal. Yeah, when two things coincide with each other, they are equal. Okay, so here, if it is written, it is already given to you that all the three points lie on the same line. Okay, uh, on the same line, and AB, uh, B is the point that is lying between A and C. So that means AB plus AC, that will be coinciding with the line AC. Okay, and since a, AB plus BC coincides with AC, therefore, therefore, AB plus BC is equal to AC. Okay, any doubt, anybody? This is from the exam. No, no. Exam number? Uh, what was the exact exam number? No, 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 exam number four. Yeah, very good. Uh, exam number four. Now, if, let me see this question. I think this question is in your NCRT book also, and it has been asked also. Let me copy the question. Okay, prove that an equilateral triangle, okay, prove that an equilateral triangle can be constructed on any given line segment, okay? For a uh, given line segment, you can draw a equilateral triangle. Now, you can do this like, um, see, only a line segment is given. You can name it as A, B, or whatever, PQ, anything you can name it as, okay? So prove that an equilateral triangle can be constructed on any given line segment. So how can we draw an equilateral triangle on a given line segment? Good evening, ma'am. 
क्या कुछ नहीं ना जी how can we draw a equilateral triangle on a given line draw two thirty डिग्री <laughs> For another circle, take B as center, but AB will be your radius. Okay. Now this is your point of intersection. Okay. This is the point of intersection. Now join this point and name it as C. Okay. Right here. Okay. Ma'am, what chapter is going on? Euclid's only. Some questions okay. for left Razi. Okay. So we are going to do the questions. Okay. Now C at C point. Now how can we prove that this is an equilateral triangle? C in triangle uh, in circle in circle. Uh, First, okay. This is your first circle, and this is your second circle. In circle first, okay. AB is equal to AC. Why? Radius. Radius of the circle. AB is also the radius, and AC is also the radius of the circle. If you see, okay. The figure is not perfect. That's why maybe, but AB and AC is a circle. So AB is equal to AC. Now in second circle, okay. If you see the second circle, then again, AB is equal to BC radius, and radius are equal. Okay. Now since Equal quantities is AB is equal to AC and AB is equal to BC also. Therefore, AC is equal to sorry AB equal to AC is equal to BC. Okay. Therefore, equilateral triangle. Okay. Any doubt? No, ma'am. Ma'am, I joined it. Can you explain it to me again? Razi, you are asking. Okay. Yes, ma'am. In if question was given. See, uh, you read the question. Prove that an equilateral triangle can be constructed on a given line segment. Okay, so only a line segment was given AB. Now, how can you draw an equilateral triangle on a line on a given line segment? Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to take AB as center, uh, AB as radius, A as center, and draw a circle. Okay, again we are going to take AB as radius, but this time B as center and draw another radius. Okay, now the point of intersection you can see here. So we are going to join that point from A and B, and that. Mark it as C. Okay. Now, if you see the figure, so in the first circle, the red circle, AB will be equal to AC. AC. Okay. AB will be equal to AC because both are the radius. Okay. Of the first circle, the red circle. Okay. Both are the radius. Now, in the second circle, if you see again, AB will be equal to BC because it uh, they are the radius of the circle. Okay. If I draw anything from the center. To the circle circumference, so it will be a radius or not? This will be radius. Same thing is here also. B to C, so they are the radius. Okay, so the radius will be equal to one another. Okay, so that means okay. AB is equal to AC and AB is equal to BC also. That means AB is equal to AC is equal to BC. And you can see from the figure that it looks like a triangle. Okay, so this there is a it is an equilateral triangle. Okay, since all the three sides are equal to one another. Okay. Everybody has done their assignment. Uh, I think. No. When we are doing this, or do we have to take the radius of both the circles equal? Both the circles. Uh, see, uh, uh, Adrika, the segment, the line segment that is given to you, uh, you are going to take that as a radius. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Any any line segment was given. Okay, and you have to make a equilateral triangle of the same line segment. Okay, the length should be same. That's why we will be taking AB as the radius for both the circles. <laughs> Now let's see Euclid's fifth quadrant. Actually, we have already done the fifth quadrant, but there's equivalent version of the Euclid's fifth quadrant. In fact, Euclid's fifth quadrant can be written in many forms. Okay, one form is your Playfair axiom also. Playfair axiom. Okay. Now what do you say? For every line L, for every line L, then uh, and for every point E, not lying on L. Okay, you can take any point E. Which is not lying on L. The condition that is not lying on L. There exists a unique line M passing through P and is parallel to L. Okay. So the lines that uh, the point that is not lying on L. Okay. There exists a line which is passing through that point. Ah, uh, passing through that point and it is parallel to L. Actually, just trying to say that that when two lines are parallel, they are never going to intersect each other. So you can say it like this also. Okay. It is written here. In other words, we can state that two distinct Intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line. Okay, so if they are intersecting lines, they are not parallel to the same line. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Now, 
Let's come to the question number A. Prove that now here the same uh, based on the same uh, postulate. The question is asked: Prove that the two lines which are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. Okay. So L. Okay. Now it is given that L is parallel to L. Actually, it is given that a line is parallel. Two lines are parallel to the same line. Okay. So the question proves that two lines which are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. That means if L is parallel to N and O is parallel to N. Therefore, uh, L should be parallel to M. Okay. You have to prove. Actually, not therefore to prove. Okay. Now, how can you prove? Okay. Now, suppose it is saying that L should be parallel to M. Now, suppose that L and M and L and L yeah, L is parallel to N and uh, L is parallel. Uh, L is parallel to N. Okay, so we have to say that we have to prove that L is parallel to N. Now suppose that L is not parallel to M. Okay, L is not parallel. Not parallel to. That means if L is not parallel to N, that means what? That for M, M is going to intersect at a point because the lines which are not parallel to each other, they are going to meet somewhere. Okay? Don't know where they will meet, but they will meet somewhere. Okay? So they will intersect at some point. Can you answer Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Huh. They are going to, suppose L and uh, L not parallel to M, then they will be. Uh, they are going to uh, intersect at any point. Okay. You can assume that point, uh, like A, B, C, anything. Okay. Now, if the two lines L and M both are parallel to M, okay. See, both are parallel to M. Okay. This contradicts that parallel lines axiom. Okay. Now, if you see the parallel line axiom here. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Realize. Yeah, it is here. In other words, we state that that two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to say okay, distinct lines cannot be parallel to the same line. Two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line. Okay. And if you see here, if we are supposing that L is not parallel to M, so they will be intersecting at the at any point. Okay, at any point, name it as A. Okay, this will contradict this parallel ex, uh, parallel line axiom. Okay, or the you can say uh, fifth postulate. Okay, so that means that L is parallel to M. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now the last question. Let's see. There exists a pair of straight lines that are everywhere equidistant from one another. Is this statement a direct consequence of Euclid fifth postulate? Explain. Okay, consider the line L. There is a pair of straight lines. So there are a pair of straight lines are there that are lines that are everywhere equidistant from one another. Okay. So what do you say? That uh, there exists a pair of straight lines that are everywhere equidistant from one another. Is this statement a direct consequence of Euclid fifth postulate? Is a pair of straight lines straight lines that are everywhere equidistant from one another. So it is telling you that there are pair of straight lines that are equidistant from everywhere. Okay. So equidistance everywhere that means what? That they are not going to meet at any point. Yes. So it is a direct consequence of Euclid's fifth postulate or not? Yes. Because the lines that if they are uh, equidistance throughout your uh, throughout the lines then till the lines are extending okay so that means they are parallel lines okay because the pair in the parallel lines the perpendicular distance is the equal okay if you draw a perpendicular between the lines okay so it is equal distance from the starting point to the end point yes or no then only you can say parallel if they are not equal distance if they are not equal distance the line so they will be meeting somewhere or not okay on one of one of the side they are going to meet okay but when the perpendicular distance uh, is equal through in the parallel lines the perpendicular distance is equal throughout okay this perpendicular distance okay if you draw a perpendicular between the two parallel lines so it will be uh, the distance uh, that uh, you can say the height of that perpendicular will be equal throughout okay so it is a direct consequence any doubt in this euclid's geometry 
In fact, yeah. you know, ultimately, you will be having only simple axioms and postulate, and it is not going to cover much of your uh, means uh, in the syllabus. It doesn't cover so much marks also. Okay, generally, uh, maybe postulate can be asked, especially fifth postulate. Okay, prepare for the fifth fifth postulate because and the version equivalent version of your Euclid fifth postulate also. Okay, so this one, uh, the play, play fair axiom. Okay, and you have to uh, learn all the fifth uh, seven axioms and five postulate. Okay, and a simple questions. Uh, simple questions, in fact, whatever questions you have seen, they are simple only. So these type of questions only can be asked. Okay, there's much not much more in this Euclid chapter, Euclid geometry. Okay, and your next chapter is your lines and angles. Okay, now uh, in the last assignment, I think uh, one of your question uh, was uh, in that question, your diagram was missing. Yeah, I think question number third or second. Uh, yes, ma'am. Question number third. Question number third. Diagram. In fact, I have taught that question in the class, uh, but uh, by mistake, I forgot to put the diagram there. Okay. So actually, the same question I have taught in the class also. I'll show you here only. This one. This was your question. Yeah. And this is your diagram. Okay. So now, by looking at the diagram, I think it was is it easy or not? Or you need explanations? See, uh, in the first, it is written at AB. Yeah, AB is equal to. Uh, that is AB is equal to BC. Then M is the midpoint of AB. M is the midpoint of AB and N is the midpoint of BC. Show that AM that if M is the midpoint of AB, that means you can write uh, AM as half AB and MB also as half AB. Okay, similarly for uh, uh, BN also you can write half BC and NC also you can write as half BC. Okay, and that way you can prove it. Okay, and BM is equal to BN, BN is equal to BN. That uh, this also you can prove in the same way. Okay. So I think Euclid's chapter is complete. Anybody, any doubt in any of the postulate or exam? Your uh, three tests are, including this chapter, your three tests will be pending. So on Friday, I will be taking your coordinate geometry test. Okay. On this Friday? Yes, this Friday. Um, okay. It will be only a one hour test, okay? Because not too much. But tomorrow I have a test, then they have to tomorrow also have a test. Then Friday I have spelled the also, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, for next week. Tomorrow time for test, I think. Uh, but you give a coordinate geometry will be not uh, very much tough. Okay, see only you have to uh, from the statement you have to derive the equation and then you have to plot the uh, take out the points uh, for for various y you are, for various x you have to take out the y points and plot it on the graph. That much will be there. So I should not take on. So shall I take Euclid geometry on Friday because that is a recent chapter. Then coordinate geometry and uh, your linear equation I will be taking on twelfth instead of your bio class. And after 15, I'm having exams. This I'm saying, now for me, 18th through 23rd, we have exams at school, so I can't write. I need again. to prepare for exams. Okay. Same for me, ma'am. So, no test these days? No, I'm till 23rd, but then whenever I have exams, I'm going to avoid doing tests. Okay, okay, fine. And my exam from 15 to, uh, it's from 15 to 23. And mine's 18 to 23. So, till 23, you will all be busy, at least. So, after 23, only you'll be busy. 15 to 20. Okay, fine. Okay, then we will be having test uh, after your exam. But after exam, I think uh, back to back test will be there. It will be okay because two metric test chapters will be pending. Your point geometry, linear equation, EUC, and uh, LNA will be. I'll be starting today. Okay, is that okay? Back to back, I think it's uh, okay. Maybe I'll be able to prepare. <laughs> Not back to back. In one week, I will take one test. That's it. Okay, that is okay. In one week, you have three classes. Two will be your classes, and one will be your test. Okay. Or okay. in or uh, some assignment instead of assignment, I will take test. Okay. A short test. Okay. Coordinate geometry okay. and EUC, you will be having a small test. Le LEQ, I will take a little uh, test. Okay? EUC is Euclid axioms, right? Yeah. In that, only some of the questions that you have done and uh, your all the seven exam I will be asking, your postulate, your fifth postulate on uh, version, okay? That's all that will be there in the test. And in coordinate geometry, again, uh, the basic terms, your uh, Cartesian name, uh, what is abscissa, are, what is uh, ordinate and all this simple definition. And after that, some of the uh, copied questions will be there. That's it, okay? Not 20. Okay. They will be having only 10 questions in both the tests. And in LNQ, so, only Okay. Okay. So shall we start with L N Q L N A lines and angles? Yes, I mean. From today only, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Today okay. Ma'am, so I don't have equipment. Right now. So I will be telling you definitions only today. Okay. And lines and angles is not for construction, Shadhan. Uh, it will be uh, your geometry question. Okay. Okay. So, then it's okay. okay. So yeah, it is a part of geometry. Okay. Okay. So today is just the intro of uh, L N Q uh, L N A. Sorry. Okay, because it's already thirty one. So let's see. 
So lines and angles. So what do you think? Lines and angles. What we are going to study. We are going to study about lines, angles, angles, and pair of angles. Okay. So uh, who is going to tell me about lines? <laughs> Lines. So, on lines, ma'am. Yeah. In fact, uh, before lines also, we have points. Okay. And point is your, uh, you can say, basic point. Ma'am, ma'am, a line is like a correction. Uh, is is like a point that can be extended indefinitely in all directions. Uh, no, See, line is not a point. Line is. Line is a collection of points. Okay. Line is like an infinite line is like an infinite collection of points. Yeah. Because in line, when many points are there, and all the points lie in the same, uh, same uh, you can say at same pace. Okay. So when you join all the points, then it is a line. Okay. So, a uh, simple definition of point is a point, uh, a point is exact. A point is exact location because it is a single topic. Okay. Now, line, line in a line is a collection. Line has only length. Okay. So, line is just containing of only length. In fact, in Euclid, also I have tell you the definition of line. It is a breathless length. Do you remember this? In Euclid, we have covered the starting point. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it is point is that which has no path. Point is an exact location. Okay, so line is a length which has no length. Okay, now ray and yeah, line can be extended on both sides. Okay, line can be extended on both sides. Okay, you cannot draw a line on a paper. We can represent a line with a paper. It's a line is infinite, so uh, infinite uh, in length. So you can't draw it on a piece of anything. <laughs> you represent a line. Actually, you represent a line on a paper and in both sides. And if you want to, the representation of a line is that if you are representing lines on bar on both, you can on both sides. Okay, because it is an endless. It is endless. You cannot and for the way. It can be extended from one end. It is end point is there, and from another end, it can be extended. So, from only one end, it is extended. Now, the line segment. So, uh, line segment has you will put a bar, okay? And line segment, you can draw it on a paper, okay? Because line segment is a specific picture, okay? You can mark, uh, it is a part of a line, uh, it is a part of a line, okay? And it has endpoints on both the sides, a, a line segment, okay? So that is the difference between a line, this is a line, this is a ray, and this is a line segment. Okay, so if you see here, the relations are written here also, that uh, the part of a line with one end point is called a ray. Okay, line segment, a part of a line with two end points is called a line segment. Okay, and if you see the uh, difference between the line, ray, and line segment, then line has no end point. Okay, it can be extended from both ends. Okay, ray has one end point. Okay, from one end it can be extended, and one end it has an end point. And line segment, it has two end points. From both the ends, the end points is there. Okay, it is a fixed line. Okay, it has a fixed distance. Okay, now the line does not have a definite length. Okay, obviously, if it can be extended on both sides, so it does not have any definite length. Okay, a ray also does not have a definite length because from one side it can be extended, whereas line segment has doesn't have a definite length. Yes, because it has endpoint on both the sides. And the third one, we cannot draw a line on a paper. We can simply represent by the diagram. Okay, and same is for the ray also. We cannot draw it on a paper. We simply represent it by a diagram. And for line segment, you, you can draw it on a paper, okay? And representation that I already told you, because line segment can be extended from both sides. So you are going to put arrow above a, a B on both sides on the line. Ray will be extended only on one side. So arrow is only on one side. And line segment cannot be extended. It has endpoint. So it is represented by a bar. Any doubt in any of these simple definitions? Okay, these are actually your base of your geometry, okay? So you're going to... Okay. Now, collinear and non-collinear points. Okay. Collinear points means whenever we are talking about collinear points, minimum of three points is required. Okay. Always remember. So, if three or more than three points lie on the same line, okay, on a single line, if all the three points lie, or all the four points lie, or how many, however, how many points you are taking, all of their points are lying on a single line, then they are called collinear points. Okay. And if any of the point is out of your 
they are straight lines, so it is non polygon. In fact, this can see a triangle. Okay, okay, four. What? Yeah, I can repeat. Uh, Ma'am, you said that uh, collinear points are out of something, right? No, no, no. If any of the point is out of the way of the means oh, okay. points, then they are non collinear points, okay? okay collinear points, all the points will lie on the same line, okay? Now, in the given figure, can you uh, differentiate which one is the ray and which one is the line segment? The one which you can see with the oh, arrows. No, H and F are, uh, are, are uh, rays. Uh, sorry, F, E and H, G and uh, Q, P. Those are rays. And E, G, G, P and P, uh, P, P. E are uh, line That's segments. Right. Yeah, because they are fixed. Okay. Whereas you can extend E, F, you can extend G, H and you can extend P, Q also. Okay, um, but that's only in one direction. So yeah, uh, yes, ma'am. So that's a that will be a way, not a line. Yeah, because lines lines can be extended on both the side, whereas way can be extended on only one side. Intersecting lines and non-intersecting lines, two lines where uh, intersecting lines when they are meeting, two lines when they are meeting at a point, they are called intersecting line, mm -hmm. and that point is called line of intersection. Okay, and non-intersecting lines means two lines are parallel, then only they are non-intersecting lines. Okay, because non-parallel lines will meet at some point. Okay, now uh, and yeah, that I told you just in the Euclid only the, the if you draw a perpendicular between the two lines, the length will uh, will be same throughout. Okay. So that is the distance between the two parallel lines. Okay. Now angle. What is the angle? If you uh, if two rays intersect at a point, okay, or you can say uh, the figure formed by two rays with the same initial point, okay, from one point all both the rays are initiating, okay, then it is called a angle. Okay. The two rays are there. I am taking a point O, and from this only I am. This is your initial point, and then I am drawing the ray okay the two rays so this is your angle okay and this is your arm and this is your vertex okay understood so that this is your angle the rays are called the arms okay and the point the initial point is the vertex where both the rays meet type of angles so there are various types of angles now what are the uh, different types of angles are here acute angle right angle obtuse angle straight angle reflect angle and complete angle so anybody can tell me definition of any other or anybody has studied about any of the angles? No, my study. Now we studied acute angles, obtuse angles, right angles, complete angles, supplementary and complementary angles. Yeah. Right now I only remember acute and obtuse right now. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, now we also around right angles and reflex and complete angles. Now I only remember acute, right angles and uh, uh, obtuse and reflex. Yeah, okay, so acute angles are what? Acute. An angle which are below 90 degrees. degrees. Yes, the angles which are from zero, which lie between, which are greater than zero and less than 90 degrees. Okay, so you can write an acute angle. Acute angle. Angle greater than zero degree and less than 90 degrees. Okay, so this angle will be greater than zero degree and less than 90 degrees. Okay, right angle. Right angle, angle will be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, now obtuse angle, angle will be greater than angle is greater than 90. Yes, it is 90 degree and it will be less than less than 180. Okay, now straight angle. Straight angle, I think that was 180 degrees, right now? Equal to 180 degrees. Okay, like I said. Now, reflex angle. And also, you forgot to mention uh, right angle. No, I mentioned right angle. Oh. Right angle. Oh, you mentioned right angle. Mm -hmm. Acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, and then straight angle. And then, then reflex angle. Reflex angle, and then it's reflex angle is uh, more. More yeah, than uh, two, more is than greater than 180 degree, but less than 360. Degree. Okay. Oh, yeah, less than. Okay. Yes. And uh, if you see the uh, complete angle, complete angle was like uh, 360 degree. Angle is equal to 360 degree. Okay. So these are your uh, six angles. Okay. Acute angle, obtuse angle. Uh, sorry, acute angle from from depending on the angles we are going. Acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle. Then your straight angle, reflex angle, and complete angle. Okay. And these are your definitions mm -hmm. that acute angle, it will be between 0 and 90 degree. Okay. Right angle, exact 90 degree, not 0.1 degree. Okay. Right angle, 
So I am uh, stopping here only, some with common definition. Okay.